shoot, if I had just done the PPGZ episode 3 review this week, then we would have had perfect synergy. Surprisingly, we didn't open this week with that recap buffer from last week. I guess they realized how it was kind of pointless. And instead, we went straight into the episode with everyone asleep. Well, everyone except for Mrs. Natsuumi, who was up early making lunches for both herself and her daughter. Said daughter took notice of her mother's efforts. Later, Manatsu used her ninja skills to invite all of her friends to eat lunch together. With that, she happily partook in her. <laughs> Ah, uh, Minatsu, I really wouldn't follow Michael's method of carbo loading if I were you. Actually, her mom messed up and gave her daughter all of the rice while she took all of the proteins. Fortunately, her friends shared a little bit of their food, and I mean a little, and yet that somehow qualified as Tropica Shine, which I guess means low protein and high carb. Well, to be fair, it is probably safer than going to the supermarket right now. <laughs> Manatsu first tried Minori's meatball that didn't go down quite easily. As it turned out, it was made from a blend of jute mallow, okay I don't know what that is, but it seems like a healthy green and natto which I actually kind of like though I'm not sure if I would want in my meatball, and uh, tuna eyes which I hear's full of DHA, and uh... But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? Fortunately, the latter two items were edible with Sango's hand flour and Asuka's tamagoyaki egg roll. The former actually had a surplus of flowers, making for a very cute yet kind of brownly lunch of just meat and rice. Thus realized that only one member of their team could actually cook, Manatsu decided to have Asuka oversee a cooking class as their club's first activity. So I guess the writing the last episode didn't count for anything? Night Kid, of course, says this was a nice scene as we got some characterization for everyone, especially Asuka and Minatsu. For the former, we learn more about her family life and how they all work together on the house chores, which inspired the latter to follow suit in helping her mother, who was clearly struggling between everything and her job. Good stuff that showed how our lead cure could be considered, just ignore the fact that she was kind of inconveniencing Asuka, but she's a tsundere, so it kind of works out, I guess. Meanwhile, the lair of the witch, Chongye was doing his job as a chef competently, and yet his master wasn't appreciating his work. Then again, he didn't see her turn down his food, and instead this guy instigated things, including telling him to get more motivation energy. Hmm. Well, back with the pre-cure, they were using their Saturday and the home ex classroom to make their lunches. Under Asuka's instruction, the team was going to make a kurun bento. Kurun bento? <laughs> Minori, I officially award you the title of scariest damn breaker in existence, and this was the previous title holder. No, obviously, it was just a bento with a side dish made to look like the seal. So basically, they're trying to make cat bentos, which you know, I've seen them do some amazing work with pre care characters. Like, seriously, just do a Google image search of pre care caravan. I'll even include this text in the description below for you to use. Of course, Laura, being Laura, decided to sit things out at first, but seeing everyone get into it, plus Minori struggling with an egg, maybe she should try cracking it first, motivated her to jump in. Isn't that a success in your book? And after a cute montage, where we got to see everyone's varying levels of skill, we got another good scene of Manatsu considering what her mother had to go through every morning just to cook for her, all the while, Asuka encouraged her with some very practical cooking tips. And even though this clearly wasn't their episode, Minori and Sango even got a little characterization with them saying what their favorite foods were, with Sango again choosing the cutesy protein with the octopus sausage, and Minori with the healthy broccoli. This week's writer was Mio Inoue, who has written for pre here before, but just as a secondary writer for Hard Catch and ugh. I mean, to be fair, I don't know if any writer could salvage a film that's very concept was mostly to be a collection of music video montages, and she did write some good episodes for Hard Catch, including the S tier fashion show episode. And just from what I've seen in this episode, she could still write some good stuff for this franchise, even over a decade later, so hopefully she can keep it up. 
And I think she's also done great work outside of Pretty Cure with stuff like Irmakun mostly writing the Amiri episodes, and I look forward to her work in the second season, but I digress. Sakuragawa came to check up on the Tropical Club, and almost saw Laura, and somehow mistook her for a giant fish, because yeah, I'm sure four middle school girls could get their hands on a swordfish by the looks of it. <laughs> You all really do want that Zenkaiser crossover, don't ya? With their bentos made, the Precure decided to have their lunch outside, or in Laura's case, inside of her pot, and okay, while I would question why her bento isn't flowing away like it did last time, I'm more distracted by the fact that Kurun's bento is just more cookies. That cannot make for a balanced diet. I'm starting to think this seal is just Umaru in disguise. However, their lunch was interrupted when Chongye launched an attack, and can we really call these people victims when they all look like they're just high? Anyway, the monster was a shaved ice machine, and I guess to make their roll call a little more unique, Manatsu changed up their lines a little to match up with the episode. She also might have died because she was hungry, which affected all of the Precure's fighting ability, as well as their character models, yeah, more on that later. Anyway, Laura had a plan and just needed the cures to stop the monster for a little while. And fortunately, Asuka remembered something from their cooking lesson and used a clever tactic to freeze and preserve the Araneda for later. With that, they enacted Laura's plan, which was to get a single bite from their lunches, which was actually pretty smart, as even a little digestion would promote a jolt of adrenaline. With that, we got a little payoff from their aforementioned favorite foods, and they did the usual routine, and thankfully, we got Asuka's fair shoot this week, I kinda missed that one. With that, they were finally able to sit down and just enjoy their lunches, though it was a little difficult to eat their Kurun rice in front of the actual seal. Well, difficult for everyone except Laura and Minatsu. Uh, Minatsu, you're in her yang gear, you're showing. With that, the episode ended on some nice notes, with Minatsu being able to cook dinner for her mother, though more importantly, the fight inspired Chongi to freeze the witch's leftovers, not thoughtful of the guy. This was a pretty good episode, with a surprisingly decent amount of characterization for several characters. Minatsu is able to show off more of her amiable leader side, Asuka revealed that she was more than just a tomboy, and Minori showed off her... sadistic side. Production-wise, this is actually handled more by the B team of the staff, which you could see in some areas, though it was still decent, and hopefully they can maintain at least this level of quality going forward. Interestingly, this episode had three animation directors, with the most experienced among them, Ayako Mori, having only worked on three seasons, including this one. Truth be told, they all had decent resumes, but it was also clear they were grouped together because they were still works in progress for this franchise. Same could be said for the episode director and storyboarder who were also newbies. Again, I like that they're injecting new blood for the series, and for a more laid-back filler episode like this, they did a fine job, except for maybe the fight, which did feel disjointed and not on model half the time. Thankfully, this was made up for by the returning Inoue's writing, who in spite of being away from Precure for a while, was able to write an episode where Minatsu showed that she could be very considerate and proactive, great traits for a lead character to have, and Asuka could be a carry mentor figure amongst her team. The fact that they brought up a lot of practical cooking advice helped to make it all feel all the more authentic, and sometimes even just learning what their favorite foods were could speak volumes about the character. Her comedy was also on point, as personally, I do like more satirical stuff like Midori's deadpanness throughout this one, and kind of black humor, which surprisingly they managed to sprinkle into this Sunday morning anime. I guess working on Irma-kun has been a good experience for her. And hopefully she won't be too busy with that show second season, and can come back with some second servings for this one. Work on the second part of my Gold Princess review is going really well, and I should have it done by the end of the month, and definitely before the big move to the new place. From there, I'm considering doing a little side project regarding Precure and Super Sentai, or I might just go into part 3, we'll see how things pan out. If anything, it should be very informative, and by that I mean really geeky. Still, until then though, Feral Fanatic Brains, and if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go practice making some Tamagoyaki. Seriously, do yourself a favor and buy one of these, and try making one, it's a lot of fun.